it's a funny story for another time. It's a really funny story. It's, it's a funny story, really, you say. And grin as you want to laugh for thinking about it. Uh, but it will have to wait for another time. Why are you busy? She asked. In point of fact, yes. With what? Well, it's difficult to explain, but I'm in something of a hurry. She rolls her eyes and shakes her head. You don't want to tell me why you're wearing a dress, just say so. Fine, I'd rather you don't know why I'm wearing a dress. You're impossible, <laughs> Kriya says. Decide to change the subject while you have the chance. I'm guessing one of those options would probably give me some morale. Uh, not that I need any. I look for you at the. G I might actually die because I only have five life. Um, might have to spend some favor to get some life. Uh, I look for you at the guardhouse. You tell Korea. They said they hadn't seen you. Did you get your get our money? She shakes her head. Uh, I went, but Bone Bra wasn't there. In fact, it's curious. What's curious? You say. No one has seen him since the morning, Kriya tells you. I'm more interested in a reward, you tell her. I'm in need of coin at the moment. For more dresses, she observes. You chuckle. You'd be surprised all the clothing difficulty I'd had over the last few hours. In fact, I need to change. I'm not sure I can get out of this dress without destroying it. You hold up the bundle of men's clothing. Think you can help me? She lifts an eyebrow. It occurs to you that sounded only after you said it. You could forge ahead, give her a signature grin and wink. You could explain that you didn't mean anything by it, just need help with the lace. Or you could turn it around and scold her for having a dirty mind. <laughs> that one's is good. Holy shit, I want to pick the second one, uh, but I'm going to go with this. Tell her she has a dirty mind. <laughs> that is funny. You fix a scowl on your face. Do not raise your eyebrows at me uh, with your lewd intentions. I'm a proper lady, I'll have you know. Uh, Kriya laughs. Now come along and help me out of this course that's choking me. You lift your chin in the air, march towards the road in a hurry of the end, leaving Kriya to hurry after you. Ten minutes after you are in Kriya's room on the top, a top, top floor of the Leering Virgin Inn, one of the spell books lay open on the bed. A curious odor fills the room. The window is open to let in a soft breeze. What is that smell, you ask? Are you going to tell me why you're in a dress? She says no, you shake your head. She shrugs. Then I see no reason why I should tell you my business. Turn around. You turn and present your back to Priya. She starts working on the lace and eyelets. You know, she says, I'm usually on the other side of this equation. Often, <laughs> you ask. <laughs> she gives you a playful slap on the shoulder. After a moment, she says, often enough. Oh, really? You aren't the only one with a mysterious past, Rooster. The Corsair finally blessedly, blessedly releases. And you take a full breath for the first time in what seems like forever. I was unaware that I was so mysterious, you tell her. Uh, Kriya tosses her head back and laughs, and it's a musical tone that, that coming from a man, that coming from, wait, what? It's a musical sound that coming from a man who spent his morning fighting goblins and giant rats seems to have illusion potions hidden in all of his pockets <laughs> and now wearing a dress. What can I say? You give her a roguish wink. You never what you never know what you're going to get with a man like me. Obviously, she says. I think she likes you. Egra says. You stay out of this. You think to Egra. Egra makes a sniffing noise, perhaps an imitation of crying. Fine, if you don't want a woman's advice. Rhea thrusts the bundle of clothes into your arms. You better get dressed. The dress is hanging off your shoulders. The room is small. You're intimately aware of Kriya's presence in it. She smells. Her scent fills your head, making your thoughts sluggish. She wants you to kiss her. Egra says, "What would you know? <laughs> you, what do you? What would you know? You think you're a demigod? I'm still a woman." Egra says, "And a woman always knows." Wait, she is not a woman because technically they don't have a gender. I think. Priya's standing there, waiting for you to do some, say something, or do something. Maybe she's just waiting for you to change clothes. You could turn around to her. You can turn around while you dress. You could try to kiss her, or you could try asking Egra for advice. Uh. I don't think kissing her is a good idea. I mean, I, I mean, I literally have no idea what would anyone do in a situation like this. Maybe some people who are more apt with women could possibly tell you what to do, but I have no fucking clue. So let's just uh, tell Kriya to turn around. Taking the cautious route, turn around while I change. A smile tugs at the corner of Kriya's mouth. Like she finds your shyness a little funny, but she turns. You shrug out of your clothes, sh shrug out of your dress, and hurry into your other clothes. I thought if I, if she looked at me, uh, she would probably be offended, <laughs> considering we just sh we're probably going to take in our clothes real fast off and putting on the new ones because we need to get the fuck out of here. Uh, now finally dressed in your own clothing, you look Kriya over. The dress of a lady, you say, and the color purple. I thought you witches would only wear black and gray. Some, re some red comes to Kriya's cheeks. A witch is a woman too, only with more talent, she says softly. Uh, Kriya walks over to bed, pulls down the top cover. What you thought was a bulge of a pillow is actually a mass of white fur and long naked tail. Ugh, you say automatically. Ra Wait, how? He's, he he's white now? Oh, the, the rat is white? I thought he was grey. 
Uh, the rat who has been curled into a ball stirs and then gets to his feet. Yet his large belly hangs down, touching the mat of the bed. Where did you? Where did this one come from? You say. Is the one I summoned from the sewer? Says Kriya. His name is Hawes. He has turned white and become rather fat. You say. It is part of a transformation to become my familiar. Says Kriya as she smiles fondly down at the animal. How do you call him? Why do you call him Hawes? You say. It means top of the pile in Goblin says Kriya. Appropriate that his name would be in Goblin's foul tongue. Why am I so angry at the rat, you say? Yet if you mean that this particular rat was the greatest of the rats in the horrid rat nest, then I say there are, there are there were far larger rats than Hawes. But not smarter, she says. My aim was to summon a familiar, not a rodent thug. Well, you could have paid a little more attention to the physical well-being, you say. I fail, I fail to see how he can serve you dragging that gut around on those stubby legs. <laughs> <laughs> Kriya scowls at you. Watch what you say. He can understand more than you know. She then picks up the rat with both hands. She smiles as she looks into the rat's beady eyes. Do not listen to that fool, she whispers to him. Then as though to prove he's not too heavy, she removes one hand to hold him with, wo with one. The rat returns her gaze with what you think may indeed be fondness. Why am I st getting stuck at reading? <laughs> it's like my system's lagging or something. Be careful, rooster. Uh, says Egra in your mind. She may have found a more intelligent adventuring companion than you. There were a few regretful side effects from the transformation, but you will get it sorted. Won't be, won't be Hawsey. Kriya brings the rat in closer to her face and her lips pucker. Is she trying to kiss a rat? That's what Kriya looks like? Damn, she looks a lot different from I remember. And that rat looks, that rat looks pretty fucking cute. Yeah, that rat looks pretty fucking cute. I think the rat looks better than her. I mean, I, I guess this is just the angle that making her look not as good. I mean, she's good looking, right? She's good looking, but I think the angle of this picture just makes it look a bit weird. I don't know. It's something about her face that's... It's like her skull is too big or something. Like, it's, it's just something uncanny about her. That I can't put my finger on her. Her face looks weird for some reason. Very slightly weird. It looks normal probably if you look from the front, but it looks slightly weird. Well, at least I got a thumbnail. Regardless, uh, gods know you say. Despite your plea, Kriya, uh, Kriya, kisses the top, Kriya kisses the top of the rat's head. Her lips press down Hawzi's tiny ear. When she looks back at you, she chuckles. Do not look so horrified. I bathed him since the sewer. No doubt you bathed together, you say. Of course. Of course, she says as she carefully sets Hawz back down on the bed. The rat curls up again. He is still drained from his ordeal, says Kriya. A bit of concern in her voice. Speaking of unfortunate creatures, where is Gookog? You say, um, you ask. Kriya shrugs. He was too hungry to hunt for bone draw with me, so he left. I presume to find some supper. He retrieves, she retrieves a spell book, then sits on the bed beside the rat, as though forgetting you're there at all. She opens the book and begins reading and muttering softly under her breath. Carefully fold the dress to avoid any more damage, then pull, up, pull on your leggings. What's your plan on plan for getting our reward money. Priya sighs as she lifts her head from the book. From the book, I haven't got one just yet, she says. I'm sure Bone Bra will turn up sooner or later, and please don't disturb me while I'm studying spells. Right, you mutter. I forgot. Anyway, the sun is down. I have a dress to deliver. The dress, uh, the Kriya closes, oh wait, this was for my sister, fucking hell. The Kriya closes the book with a snap. So you actually bought that for someone. That's right. Who, she demands. Smug, what do you want to know? <laughs> She narrows her eyes. Is it one of those floozies you were talking to in the pub? Maybe, you tell her. Why won't you tell me? She she asks. I'm mysterious, remember? You throw open the latch on the window. Swing out the bars. Out the window again, Kriya asks. Do not be surprised. You put one foot on the sill and tuck the bundle under your belt. I actually go out of the window when I take my leave from a lady. <laughs> she points out. You leap across and grab the ledge. It. It seems easier now that you have done it a few times. You scramble onto the roof, go in search of the vampire. I thought this would end with this. But I guess we are actually going to meet the vampire. Um, it doesn't take long before the vampire Innova finds you. As you sneak along the peaked roof, uh, using the chimneys for support, you hear a stealthy movement from behind. Turning, you see nothing but empty rooftops. You turn back around and the vampire is right in front of you. Reel back, close your lips on a surprise yelp. You lose your footing, you go sliding over the shinglings. The edge of the roof rushes up to meet you. Up to meet you. There are a few stovepipes you could climb, cling, cling to for per purchase? What? There are a few stovepipes you could cling to for purchase? Purchase, like buying stuff? This might be a typo. You could try to grab the edge of the rooftop as you go over, or you could call out to Irinova for help. 
I'm thinking help would be better. Uh, but that would be embarrassing. I'm just gonna call for help. Fucking hell. Fuck it. Oh, life decreases hunger. 100. You call out for help. The vampire rushes forward, but she's not fast enough. If only you had done something to slow your fall. You plummet. Uh, you go plummeting over the edge of the roof, and the ground rushes to meet you. Oh damn! Life negative hundred. I didn't think I would. I mean, I've been jumping off of roofs much higher. I don't think I would get hundred negative. Maybe seven or eight. Maybe still. Okay, whatever. I'm dead apparently. Uh, I'm gonna grab the pipes. Sure. You grab at one of the stove pipes, thrusting up through the sh shingle, grab hold and manage to hold your slide for a moment. The rusty stove pipe bends and snaps, your weight carries you to the edge of the roof. You open your mouth to scream and feel a cold hand close around your waist. Grabbing at the pipes serve to slow your fall. Grabbing at the pipes serve to slow your fall, allow the vampire the split second needed to grab you before you fell. Dangle over the precipice, your legs hang off the roof. Roof, one of the shingles went over the edge, and you hear seconds below shatter on the cobble lane far below. Renova hurdles, hauls you up with no more effort uh, than she has than if she had been lifting a flower pot. You feel the bones in your wrist creak under her crushing grip. She sets you on the sloped roof, keeps holding on your wrist until you get your footing. Thank you, you gasp. You can let go now. Um, Renova stalks the roof ledge watching you with the from the corners of the reptilian eyes her lean frame is slightly crouched ready to pounce like a leopard uh, a low growl escapes her crimson stained lips she had she has fed recently you wonder you promised me something mortal her voice is cold like the like the breath from an open grave and her hauntingly beautiful eyes spear you like daggers uh, yes that Yes, that, you say. The dress is still in your belt and is a little dusty from your tumble, but no worse to wear. You hope she remembers her end of the bargain, mainly that she promised not to eat you. You could remind her of that fact before she agrees to give her... Before you agree to give her the dress, you could simply give her the dress and hope she keeps the, her end of the bargain. You could hold the dress over the precipice, threaten to drop it until she promised to keep her end of the deal and let you have access to the rooftops. I don't think that's a good idea. I'm just gonna give her the dress. You hold the dress out, one of snatches from you and feels the material with the finger trips. A strange emotion, sadness maybe, flashes across her eyes. For a moment, for a brief moment, the deadly veneer of a vampire is gone, replaced by a broken humanity. I remember the touch of finer things, you, she says, more to herself than to you. The taste of wine, the gentle caress of a lover, laughter, the feel, the feel of sun on my skin. Uh, you feel you should say something, you could try comforting her, say a few words of encouragement. You could ask if there is any way to make her human again, or you could ask, uh, offer to caress her skin. She might like that. Finally, you could ask her to try on the dress at least. Of course, if she doesn't mind. If she, what if she doesn't like it? I'm gonna ask her to try on the dress, I think. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna... I, um, that might bring her some ba bad memories, like some brothel things where like people ask her to re wear dresses for her. I don't know if that's a good idea. I don't... <sighs> fuck. These two, middle two options are bad. I don't think there's anything we can do about that. Encourage... I don't... That sounds like we're trying to, you know, just try to g save our life or something. I'm gonna ask her to try on the dress. Why didn't you try on the dress, you say? I would love to see how you look in it. Uh, Irnova's lips part slightly. Well, now her lips turn, her lips turn up. Her fangs visible, fully visible in the moonlight. That doesn't sound like a terrified man. Have you lost your fear of me? Oh no, I certainly fear you. You say, putting up your hands as though in surrender. In fact, that's why I want to, tr I want you to try the dress. I want to make sure you like it, love it even. You wish to ingrati ingratiate yourself to me. She keeps her smile large. Takes a step towards you. You are confident. What if I don't like it? What if I become angry because it doesn't fit, does not fit? Would it not be wiser to leave now while you still can? I I put a lot of trouble into making sure it will fit. You say more trouble than I'd like to admit. You take a deep breath. Yes, I'm confident it will fit. I would not risk displeasing you. She stares at you for a few seconds, uh, and then she slowly nods. I must admit that you're an extraordinary man. She returns her attention to the dress. So would you like me to change now? Would you like to watch me? She looks back to you. Her smile is now playful. Egra, what should I do? You think, by the gods, this sounds like a trap. <laughs> Egra is silent. In fact, you realize she hasn't been around for a, quite a while. She would ex You would expect her to be enjoying this immensely. What do you say? Um, I will turn around to give you privacy. I don't think that's a good idea. 
because uh, she was a whore as I said and it would be better to treat her like a, you would treat a normal girl I guess um i don't i'm not i have never I'm, i have no experience in this matter i have no clue what to say i will just turn around and give you privacy i will turn around to give you privacy you say i don't know was eyebrow shoot up a gentleman she says yet yeah, do you uh do you speak the truth do you not recall my previous occupation i recall your current occupation better I recall your current occupation better, and so I speak with an eye towards my survival and leave truth to another night, you say. She chuckles darkly. Why? She says as she motions with her finger for you to spin around. <laughs>